On Capitol Hill, Hill later in the day, the president-elect also named his three top priorities, which Peter mentioned. We're going to show it to you once more. All right, guys, there you have it. Uh, and here we have the panel to discuss, uh, Liz Peek, Herb London, and Kelly Riddell. Liz Peek, let me start with you. Um, these transitions can be tricky, but what we've seen in the last 48 hours has been absolutely remarkable. I think it's one of the reasons the stock market has rallied to the degree it has. And I think it's another reason why a lot of non-believers, even on Wall Street, are jumping on a bandwagon. Uh, I, I think there are two reasons the market is up. One is, yes, everyone has been pitch perfect in terms of doing what they're supposed to do, which is getting ready for a new president. So Trump uh, has sound reasonable and like a president-elect should. Obama has sounded reasonably welcoming and Hillary Clinton was perfectly fine. In fact, better than fine. I've argued that had she had that uh, sort of real person aspect the last several months, she might be president now, sure. but anyway. But the market's also looking at what, a, at what uh, Trump wants to do. And all the frightening uh, media coverage of the Trump campaign le led people to feel like, oh my gosh, the world was coming to an end. There is nothing negative about the idea of cutting taxes and rolling back regulations, getting rid of Obamacare, things that the American people have made it very clear that they want and businesses want. Right. So, look, they're going to unfetter, they're going to try and grow the economy. Hillary Clinton never used the G word. I don't know what she was thinking talking about raising taxes on corporations. It was totally anti-growth. So I think the market is right to right, be but excited. It was, kind of, it was the kind of message that got the, the Democrats the White House in the prior two elections and she rolled the dice. But Herb, I think another thing here that, you know, I, I quibble with the notion that the market was totally shocked. I think Wall Street, those guys in the canyons of Wall Street, that maybe, maybe they were shocked. But coal was already rocketing. Uh, still was already on the upswing. There were certain niches of the market that might have anticipated this. But what no one really anticipated was the GOP controlling the White House, yeah. the Senate, and the House because it hasn't been done since 1928. And I think this is the booster rocket in this economy. And on Main Street because I think you can feel something in the air in this country. Everyone's starting to say, okay, this might work. Even people who didn't vote for Trump. Well, there's no question it can work. And there's also no question that political consensus is clearly on track. What is very interesting about this from my perspective is that very often people run against Washington. They say Washington is an open sewer. When they get there, it becomes a hot tub. The difficulty, <laughs> the difficulty is trying to understand what Washington is all about. Trump has to remain on focus. If he talks about the elimination of Obamacare, if he talks about real job creation, real economic growth of the kind that you've mentioned, I think he will be a very successful president. It remains, however, to be seen whether in fact he can keep both the House and the Senate in line. And I think there are a lot of Republicans who will be very much opposed to the Trump agenda. So it's clearly a question of the kind of leadership that he can provide. Uh, on that note, Kelly, I think uh, Barack Obama had, uh, I think they squandered when he was uh, the president initially. I think they squandered a great opportunity over nitpicking with Obamacare. Nancy Pelosi wanted her pound of flesh and Harry Reid wanted his pound of flesh and they really blew a great opportunity. What are you, getting, what are you sensing? You're in the heart of all of this. What are you sensing mm -hmm. down there? Well, this is a referendum on Barack Obama's uh, leftist agenda. I mean, the fact of the matter is when Obamacare passed, it did not pass with a single Republican vote. So he owns that. That is his signature uh, domestic policy, and it is a failure. He owns the Iran deal. Republicans, he never crossed the aisle with Republicans. He never heeded their advice right. or, or, or so, whatnot, so and Kelly, so now Donald Trump wants to it, dismantle it. Does this make it even easier for Donald Trump to get through his agenda? Yes, I would say so. I mean, I believe that Republicans came in here with a mandate. The fact that they kept both houses of Congress, have the presidency. I mean, this isn't some, something that's been done um, in, in, a long, in a long while. So he needs to come in and strike some great balances with the House leadership. Because the fact of the matter is there's a lot of policy agendas that overlap, like um, cutting corporate uh, business taxes, investing in the infrastructure, uh, getting rid of Obamacare, getting rid of a bunch of executive actions that Obama has placed on the office, like overtime pay or Whatnot. That will that will spur the economy, create jobs, and that's something that, quite frankly, I think we can reach across the aisle and get some Democrats on board with. And, and some of this, uh, from a mechanical point of view, uh, Liz, is low-hanging fruit, pretty easy to do. Absolutely. Some is a little bit more difficult. Donald Trump has promised a lot in the first 100 days. How do you see it playing out? 
Well, I, I think it's very important for the uh, congressmen, uh, Republican, Republicans in the House and the Senate to get on board. I hope we do not see any big schism in the House with people trying to make their reputation by standing up to Donald Trump. One of, I think you really said the right thing. One of the things the American people want is they want action. They want to actually believe that things can get done. There's a big pile up of undone bills and efforts and so forth that the American people are waiting to see go forward. So I think you're right. I think the fact that we have all three, you know, the, the White House and Senate and Congress all lined up to get this stuff right. going, I think that's very cheering to right. everybody. Could you imagine, Herb, if we see all of these things ticking off like clockwork yeah, because people it, would go crazy. Right. I mean right. because you know for a long time we, we, we I guess we started to buy into the notion that, that was sort of media fed that the Main Street likes the uh, gridlock, Wall Street likes gridlock, but it was more of a pile up, right? We do want to see exactly. government get something done. There's no question. I mean the American people are very eager to see action. The administrative state created by Barack Obama with all kinds of regulations obviously has to change. And I think that this government is prepared to do that. If that happens, we're not talking about 19,000 Dow, we're talking about 20,000 very soon. So it's a remarkable development that's occurred in America with a very buoyant feeling about the future. This okay. is not something that you felt before.